Good day, everyone. Welcome to another webisode of Alres Unboxed. I am Maria Clarice Ahimedes, one of the speech language pathologists of Alres. Today, we will talk about the connection of speech, language, and reading. Let's start with the game. Are you ready? So here's what you're going to do. I will flash some puzzles called the rebus puzzles and I want you to decode the meaning of the symbols. You could write your answers or blurt it out. I'll give you 10 seconds to figure out each puzzle. Ready? For the first puzzle, what could that be? That's correct, crossroads. This one. That's right, once in a blue moon. How about this one? Did you have a hard time? Yes, that is for instance. Tricky? The answer is just between me and you. How about this one? Correct. Once in a million. This one is a bit harder. So I think you need to better concentrate. That's correct. Two degrees below zero. And for the last puzzle, that is correct reading between the lines. And that is exactly what you did a while ago during the game. You figure out the answers by reading between and beyond the lines. You heard it right. Sometimes we overlook reading and we tend to forget the other skills needed to accomplish, right? Such as reading comprehension. Hmm. Now, let's talk about the skills you use while dealing with the rebus puzzles, shall we? Let me know if you did this by answering yes or no, okay? Did you look at the letters intently? Did you think about the sounds embedded on those figures? Did you relate the sounds to the letters? Did you tap the previous experiences in order to solve this? Did you try a different rate of reading, whether it's fast or slow? In some puzzles, did you connect one word to another? Okay. So how many yes and no's did you get? Well, these skills are very important in reading. That is right. You did a special kind of reading in which it is the culmination of all the skills. You dealt with the signs of the things represented. You dealt with the ideas and concepts that have no material, no matter, or substance, yet real, right? But you cannot do this kind of reading if some of these skills are absent. So, what is reading on the first place? Well, when we talk about reading, we can define it in many ways. According to Jennings, reading is the practical management of signs and things. Throughout history, up until now, we do reading in our everyday activities. Take, for example, the weather. We read the weather to have an everyday forecast, right? Through weather, we identify if it is day or night. Also, we could predict calamities. Road signs. We need to read road signs so that we'll know how to go from one place to another. We also need to read road signs to be safe on the roads. Information. Through reading, we can understand the contents of local and international newspapers and magazines, right? We also identify current world events. Now in the season of pandemic, most of the tasks are based on computer and on the internet. Reading allows us to do more research, study lessons, and even communicating with other people. 
Aside from the functional nature of reading, reading, according to Go and Tanner, is the product of two things, decoding and comprehension. Decoding, comprehension, what are those? To understand this formula better, let's take a look at each of the components, shall we? Decoding is the ability to associate the letters to their sounds, including their lettering patterns to correctly pronounce written words. So this begins when we understand that the letters we say have specific sounds, such as A for letter A and T for letter T. And these develops in forming words such as cat, which is comprised of K, A, and dog, which is comprised of d o g. Decoding is like code breaking, and there's a lot of skills required in order to decode. Phonological awareness, phonemic awareness, phonics, and fluency. So I'm going to start with phonological awareness. Imagine a big circle on a piece of paper. That is what phonological awareness is. It's going to be a broader awareness of sounds. Even like hearing a sound is part of phonological awareness. So it includes the following, rhyming, alliteration, syllabication, and phonemic awareness. Let's start with rhyming, okay? Let's have a little exercise. What word rhymes with mop? And this develops phonological awareness. So the answers are top, pop, cup, hop, and stop. Let's go with alliteration. Alliteration is a series of words that begin with the same consonant sound, such as this example. I bet some of you are familiar with this example, right? Next is syllabication. Syllabication is cutting a word into smaller parts, the syllables. So for this um, portion, I want you to try this. I want you to clap the number of syllables of your last name, such as this, he, me, this. Go, try it on yourself. Let's go to phonemic awareness. What is phonemic awareness? Phonemic awareness is knowing that our speech, or how we talk every day, is composed of series of sounds. Those sounds are put together to form words. Let's have an example. Can you read the blue word on top of the screen? Correct. Pot. What are the sounds in the word pot? P, A, and T. That's correct. Now I have a question. Do you have this knowledge since birth? Of course not, right? We learned this as we grow, probably around five or six, right? Now, the children must learn it to become a successful reader. Why? Phonemic awareness is needed to better understand our alphabetic system. It is a solid foundation for reading and writing. So, I'm going to give you some examples on how to work on with the smallest unit of sounds, the phoneme. Okay, so first, we could isolate sounds. Say the word chair. What's the first sound that we hear in the word chair? Ch, correct. Another one, say the word dog. What's the sound that we hear at the end? G, correct. Next, aside from isolating, we can segment phonemes. So, for example, let's count the sounds in the word cut. K, a, t. And 
How about for sheep? Sh e. This one is trickier, right? Because even though the sheep has four letters, the sounds are only three. Remember, the phonemic awareness is the sounds, not the letters. Aside from isolating or separating, you could blend them. How? You can ask your child or your student to say something like this. Okay, I'm going to stretch a word and I want you to put together the sounds that you hear. Say it fast, okay? Ah, What do you get? Hat, correct. Also, aside from those things mentioned, we could manipulate words. How? Okay, for this activity, I want your full participation. Okay? Say the word chair. Take out ch and add s. What do you get? Fair. That's right. Okay, are you ready for the next component? The first two are about hearing sounds at some level. Phonics is knowing that sounds and letters are related. We are introducing print. Having the ability to read, write, and pronounce words required the knowledge of the rules of the English alphabet or even the Filipino alphabet. Phonics is mopping out speech into print. So when the children learn that specific sounds correspond to letters, they learn the alphabetic principle. And the last component is the fluency. You can see fluency in both decoding and comprehension. It is the ability to read with speed, accuracy, and proper expression. Readers who have difficulty with fluency tend to read slowly and with an appropriate expression. Some have difficulty uttering the sounds. So what's common among these components of decoding? Can you guess? Phonological awareness, phonemic awareness, phonics, and fluency. Hmm. That's correct. Sound. All of them involve sounds. We've talked about how to blend, segregate, decode, and find sounds alike. But we haven't talked about how to produce cis sounds, right? Have you ever looked in the mirror and move your mouth and jaw this way and that? Have you noticed how flexible and mobile the muscles of your face are? Particularly around the mouth? Have you noticed how fast you can open or close your mouth and how easy it is for you to control the passage of air in and out of it? Or how about this one? Try this, okay? Run your tongue through your teeth. Notice how even in the height and width they are. These attributes make us capable of producing a great number of sounds. More so, if we combine these sounds, we produce words. And afterwards, we form sentences. Right? And this is what speech does. Speech is the movement of our articulators, such as jaw, lips, tongue, and palate, to form sounds or words. It includes voice, fluency, and articulation. Imagine a boy who has difficulty saying the sound th because of the weakness on his jaw. What do you think will happen? His words might appear like, Bathroom for bathroom, like, right? What will happen if he is asked to read this and he's aware that he cannot say There are two things that might happen here. He will still read the selection, but he will read it as something like this. While walking in the mall, Tina felt that she needs to pee. However, there's no bathroom nearby. Or he could do something like this. While walking in the mall, Dina felt that she needs to pee. However, 
there is no CR nearby. Hmm. Familiar? Did he decode correctly? No. That is why phonics is related to speech. However, this wonderful vocalizing equipment gives only the physical capacity for producing sounds. There is another factor in the formula that talks about the symbolic level. Can you guess? Let's write the language comprehension. When we talk about language comprehension, it deals with the receptive language and expressive language. Receptive language is about how much the child understands the information given to him. It includes his vocabulary, his ability to follow instructions, and his ability to answer questions. Expressive language deals with the total number of words the child uses. It also talks about the kinds of words they use, such as nouns, actions, descriptives, locations, etc. Moreover, it is how the child uses his words. It could be for commenting, requesting, or directing. So going back, language is very important to reading. Yes or no? Yes. Jennings in 1965 says that language reflects the ability of the human mind to abstract takes out experiences which the mind considers essential and uses what the humans obtain from that experience. Hmm. In addition to that, Kotmeyer in 1974 agreed and added this. Teaching reading might be improved if teachers were more consciously aware of the origin and growth of language. So how do we improve language? Let's take a look at this model. So as you can see, we have three circles. A is for experience, B is for oral language, and C is for written or printed symbols. This model emphasizes that a person uses reading for a purpose in order to gain more knowledge and to improve language. The reading of C which is represented by written printed symbols, according to Jennings, is the culmination of all other kinds of reading. These symbols represent oral language, which in turn represent our experiences, and cannot be possible without circle A. We cannot read C unless we have become skilled in the use of circles A and B, which are represented for experience and oral language. Reading begins at the womb when the body first senses the universe. During infancy, the baby interprets the world. He interprets the sounds, sights, and movements around him. As the baby exercises his vocal apparatus, through crying of course, he experiments with the sounds. He could form consonant vowel combinations such as ma, ma, then turns to more complex bubbling when varied consonant vowel syllables are uttered, such as matata, or potato, or patata, or tadata. Also, his intonation pattern begins to resemble the adults. Towards the end of the first year, before he begins to use his speech, he is already attempting to communicate. How? through pointing at objects, through hunting objects, and through making consistent sounds. From one year onwards, child language develops. From one word utterances, his vocabulary and structural knowledge grows until he can create sentences. By the time he is in preschool at around four or five, he already knows a lot of things, a lot of words, are used increasingly through complex sentence forms and can recount stories, right? He also asks many questions. By this time, he always asks, Pakit? Pano? 
Or bakit ganito? Bakit ganyan? Familiar? At age 5 or 6, when he starts to build Circle C, remember the written symbols, he had acquired a reasonable amount of experience and a sufficient level of proficiency in his native language. Once he has become an independent leader, he will increasingly use Circle C or the print, even more than Circle D, to acquire more concepts and information in various subject areas. Reading will be used more and more as a tool for learning and the main vehicle for the growth and refinement of experiences. How are you? <laughs> Can you still process the information given to you? What now after knowing the connection among speech, language, and reading? Knowing all these things, I hope that it is now clear that we don't only want a child who can decode, rather we want to have efficient readers who love to read and who will use reading for a variety of purpose and context. However, this pandemic clock us inside our house, right? The home has a very important role in the development of language experiences. See Circle A and Circle B. These are prerequisites for learning to read, the Circle C. So at this point, I will give you some tips on how to improve the different skills for reading, speech, and language. Are you ready? Let's start with phonological awareness. Remember that the phonological awareness feels with sounds. So for the first step, you can help your child understand that sentences are made of words. How? One way is through reading our books. So this time, I need your participation again. Are you ready? Um, if I do this, it means it's your turn, okay? I'm going to read to you one part of one of my favorite books. Guess How Much I Love You by Sam McBrady. Then he lay down close by and whispered with a smile. I love you right up to the moon. While reading, you need to stop and tell your child, listen to the sentence. Okay? So for this part, I would choose the, the specific phrase or sentence I showed you a while ago. Then he lay down close by and whispered with a smile, I love you right up to the moon and back. Make sure that he or she is listening, okay? Next, you need to ask your child to repeat the target words. For example, you, you are the child, so I need your participation, okay? Okay, can you repeat after me? I love you right up to the moon and back. Your turn. Okay, next, you need to count while saying the words. Okay, I'm going to count how many words are there. Listen to me. I love you right up to the moon and back. How many words? Ten words, correct. Now, you need to prompt the child to count with you. Okay, so I need you to count with me this time. I love you right up to the moon and back. Good counting! How many did you get? Ten words! Did you get that? Well, aside from book reading, you could also do this while doing grocery shopping or while um, looking at the shopping bags that you, that you had from your shopping. So, you could play what's inside that or grab a bag. So instead of saying the specific sentence from the book, you could um, transform the words using carrier phrases such as I buy plus your target words. Okay, then ask them to count the number of sen word sentences or words. Also, you could also do this for naming or fixing things. So instead of I buy, you could use I fix the plus target words. 
Next, we also need to help the child to recognize rhymes. One way to do this is to do rhymes in everyday activities by labeling the things that you can see, then add a rhyme. Something like this. Uy, may manok! Ang sabi ng manok, kok, 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 kok. Or something like this. There's a ball. Let's make it roll. That's correct. Aside from the everyday activities, of course, you could use books. So these are some of my favorite rhyming books. So apart from those two, you could help your child to determine syllables in words. So this, this has the same principle in tapping words in sentences. So here's a sample activity. In food preparation, as you say the condiments, you can say this by syllabicating them instead of saying them. For example, okay, we're going to use today peanut butter. What, do, what are we going to use? That's right, peanut butter. Also, we could use mayonnaise. What do you get? Mayonnaise, that's correct. Also, you could teach your children or your students how to blend words. So here's a quick way to do this while reading a book. You need to stop and tell the child to listen. Say the target word into two sounds. The first sound isolating the other sound. Then tell the child to combine two sounds. Ask for the target word. For example, the word hat. I have and at. What do you get? Ah, correct. So here's an example of book with a very useful um, words that you could use. The Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss. And I included some of the words that you could use for isolating. Help, okay, opposite to the previous tip. So you could also use separating words into word parts. So in this um, process, you would ask the kid to divide the first sound to the last sound. For example, and at, and, and at, right? So aside from reading books, you could also use this tip to the following activities. Packing away of toys, fixing the clothes, and naming of food items. Now, let's go to phonemic awareness. In phonemic awareness, we focus on the individual sounds, remember? Let's play a game again, okay? Let's pretend we are talking to the pets in our house. So, what's the first sound of the word dog? T, correct. What's the last sound of the word cat? T, correct. Galing ah. <laughs> Okay, some other activities are playing games, completing household chores, and reading of books. Let's go to blending, which is simply listening or saying individual sounds, then combining them to form words. So here's a sample activity for your reference. Are you ready? Let's watch the short clip. This time, meron tayong car. Ang gagawin natin, Bawat stops, doon pwedeng mag-park yung car. Kailangan nating pag-combine yung mga sounds ng letters. Okay? Let's try. For example, the word mat. So, m-a-t. Mat. Okay? Papa. Mat. So, kailangan bilisan natin yung car. Kasi wala namang mabagal na car na tumatakbo. Diba? Papa. Okay. Next word. P-a-t. What do you get? Medyo mabagal pa din. Gisi natin. Ano yun? Huh? Did you see that? Well, on the last word, it's the word hot. This time, meron tayong car. Okay. So, here are the other activities that also applicable for that. Sorry. So, shooting a ball. And ice pie. So we could twist the traditional ice pie. So instead of saying ice pie bag, 
we could use I spy B A G. What will you spy? Correct, a bag. Another is segmenting. If blending is combining, segmenting is breaking words into separate sounds. This strategy is helpful for reading and spelling, especially to those words that do not follow regular patterns. So for example, the word rat has three sounds. It is similar to the number of letters involved, right? But when we say sheep, like what we've said a while ago, the number of letters doesn't um, match with the number of sounds. That's right. For substitution of words, here's a sample activity. We could incorporate this while looking at things in the house, okay? Say the word chair. Take out the sound sh and replace by f. What do you get? Fair, correct. By learning spelling patterns in words, the child can better translate the sounds that he hears on words on paper, magnetic letters, and letter tiles. So how do we do this, the phonics, or how do we train them in phonics? So we can turn old magazines and catalogs into phonics activities that develop your child's comprehension even further. How? Pick a letter and spot everything in the catalog that has the same phonetic sound. Aside from that, you could also do picture taking around. So tap into his creative mind when you hand him a camera or cell phone and send him on a phonics adventure. Help him spot objects that navigate him from A to Z through photos. He can snap pictures of everything from an uncle to a zipper, right? Okay, now let's go to the other parts of our formula. Start your child regularly providing him an understanding how fluent reading will sound. So for fluency, voice matters. Point out how your voice changes based on character, emotions, etc. Also, we could also teach them when to make a pause. So, um, Demonstration of good phrasing, intonation, and expression will make a difference. So how to do this? You could track words with your finger, and as you track the words, encourage the child to read with you. You could also do turn-taking while reading. So another one is to read aloud. This will help in rapid and fluid reading. Let me just remind you that fluency is not a race in reading. Good fluency is reading accurately with a reasonable rate and appropriate expression. Okay. Okay, next we go we will go to vocabulary and text comprehension. Vocabulary is a key element in understanding comprehension. In order to communicate, we need to understand what we hear, speak, write, and read. Memorization is not effective, but experiential learning is. Try to ch tell the child what or is he or she doing from time to time. Magkwento. At magdagdag, sabi nga, di ba? So what can you do aside from this is to connect words to his or her prior knowledge. This is very effective for the children. So, let's take a look at some of the passages from the book, Bakit Matagal Ang Sunduko by Christine Cannon. So, this time, I need your participation once again. Okay? Are you ready? Okay, we will read this together, but with fluency. Napagod ako sa kaiisip. Isang malalim na, ay, buntong hininga, sabay na lumbaba ang tangi kong nagawa. Lalong napakulot ang noo ko sa aking mga naisip. Siguro, nalimutan ako ni nanay. Siguro, di na niya ako mahal. Siguro, napagod na siya sa pagsundo sa akin araw-araw. Siguro, 
hindi ko na napikinan ang pagluha ko. Sumikip ang aking dibdib. Hindi ako makahinga. Pinako ko na lamang ang aking nalubing mukha sa aking kamay ng biglang... Did you read it with fluency? That's right. Because in reading, we need to understand what the context. So probably the girl is crying at this point and she's looking for her mother, right? And the illustrations, you could also incorporate inferencing to the children by asking, why are there some droplets coming out from the girl's eyes? So they could predict that maybe the girl is crying. That's why if you read the text, it must be on a sad tone or a crying tone. Right? Okay. So this time, aside from identifying the fluency, what words are difficult to understand? Probably, it could be nalumbaba or buntong hininga. How to discuss meaning? You could ask your child, paano ba magbuntong hininga? Paano nga ba magbuntong hininga? Like this. You can model also, or you could do turn takings. Also, you could ask him or her when he or she does this. Tuwing kailan ka ba nagbubuntong hininga? It could be when you're sad, or when you are disappointed, or when you're frustrated, right? Other activities, aside from reading, story reading, or story narrating, you could tell jokes and do turn taking when narrating events during your times. Doing this, you are hitting two birds with one stone. You're not just improving vocabulary, you're also improving expressive language. Okay, for the last word in the formula is the reading comprehension. It could be a great help if we will have a preview of the story. Let's take a look at the storybook. Sampung magkakaibigan. Okay. The use of motivation and motive question before reading a story helps. Motivation question is a question that will tap the child's prior knowledge and will relate to his previous experiences. Motive question, on the other hand, merges the child's previous knowledge with the information within the story to be told. So how do we do this? Here's a sample motivation and motive question for this storybook. Motivation question goes like, Meron ba kayong mga kaibigan? Ano ang palagi ninyong ginagawa ng mga kaibigan ninyo? And the motive question goes like this, Ang kwento natin ngayon ay tungkol sa magkakaibigan. Ano kaya ang ginagawa nila kapag sila ay magkakasama? Okay, so going back, sorry, we could see that these two, two sentences are parallel. So they're almost the same in format and they both tap the child's experiences. Also, the motive question gives a glimpse on how the story will be unfold. So apart from this, you could also ask different level of questions. We don't want to be limited to the literal questions that you could find the answers in the story. We want our child or our student to interpret as well. For example, uh, we could interpret or evaluate how old is the character and they would justify or give inferences about this age or about traits or about characteristics. Other activities are mental representations using connections through word maps, or you could also summarize the story. Also, diagrams and graphic organizers like these. So in the first picture, I want to have a glimpse of interpreting the character or the main character in our story. So I have twisted it. So I used an ID because our main character is a student in the story. So another one is through the noon at ngayon, a comparison of the previews and the uh, effect of a specific event in the story. By this, you could recall events and experiences 
you could also make inferencing and also narrating, right? Now, we came to an end. Studies show that children who are surrounded by reading and writing materials and literacy models, like siblings and parents who read a lot, see the functional nature of reading and writing. But the most essential element is the family, who regularly interacts with the child and integrates literacy in everyday activities. For example, we could make grocery lists together. Ngayon na pandemic, you could write cards to your loved ones, asking how are they or wishing them they are okay. So you could also encourage them to attempt to read the labels around. These things lay a solid foundation not only for literacy, literacy learning, but also for a strong family child bonding, which is the most essential in a child's overall growth. Before I end, let me ask you this. Reading, ready na ba kayo to teach and to learn reading? Let me quote racial elders. The journey of a lifetime starts with turning a page. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you could share this video to others as well. Good day and stay safe everyone. Thank you.